Hello, welcome to this video podcast, whatever this is. My name is William Crockett. I hear from the Lord. I believe I do. I'm pretty sure I am. And I want to share with you three more prophetic words I received from the Lord for your edification, your growth in Jesus. I pray it blesses you. Come on, come on, come on. Um, yeah, let's let's dive in. Let's go to the first one. This is from December 18th, 2022. It was at 11.04. I was in my booth where I am right now. This is where I like to spend time with God um, at night before going to bed. And um, let's read this note. Finding such fruit and breakthrough and direction focusing on the Spirit. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Let me read what I wrote down. Praying in the Spirit is more than praying in tongues. The Spirit giving you words belly focusing on the spirit rather okay so those are just kind of notes so let me just read the specific word from the lord praying in the spirit is more than praying in tongues okay so i think we all know this this is actually what cessationists will teach right praying in the spirit is not necessarily praying in tongues and such like that and it's funny because david diga hernandez came out with a word pretty much the morning after this. I saw it, I think, on Instagram. And I was like, that's the word. That's like the word he gave me last night. That's pretty cool when you see that. Um, shout out to David D. Hernandez. Bless him. Or, yeah, bless him. He's he's awesome. He's probably one of my favorites that I watch out there. Um, but yeah, praying in the spirit more than praying in tongues. So let's, let's unpack that um, from the Lord. So we assume if we pray in tongues, we're praying in the spirit. But the problem is, or let me say, let me back up a little bit. When you're praying in the spirit, when you're praying in tongues, you are, if you really are praying in tongues, you are praying in the spirit. Does that make sense? If you're truly praying in tongues, you are praying in the spirit because you're not doing the tongues. The spirit of God is praying through you, a language you don't know, words you don't know, groanings and sounds you don't know. It's him praying through you. So in a sense, you're praying in tongues, you're you're praying in the spirit, whatever. But I think what the point is that the Lord is trying to get to is that praying in the spirit is when the Lord is praying through you, right? And actually, this goes off of the previous word I gave um, about the Lord leading us with timing when we're praying and such, like when to stop praying and what to pray for. That's very much in alignment with this. We Look, we should always be praying in the spirit. Does that make sense? whoever you are, wherever you're from, you should always be praying in the spirit. What is that? What do I mean? What I mean by this is that you are so filled with the spirit of God. You're so much in relationship with him that when you're acting, when you're moving, when you're speaking, it's the Lord with your spirit and your body moving in um, tandem, in affinity, in agreement together right? So as you're praying, which is a spiritual act, so if you ever do a spiritual act, it should be done with the Holy Spirit. You are doing it with the Lord. So say that you feel this urge to pray for your mother. Okay, you're praying for your mother. You can choose to pray on your own. I mean, think about it. People people pray all the time that don't have the Holy Spirit, right? And God hears many of them, I, I believe. We see in the Old Testament, whatever, New Testament, And we know the Spirit wasn't poured out in the Old Testament like it was in the New. So you can pray like that, right? But as Christians under the New Covenant and who have the Holy Spirit, we can pray with the Holy Spirit. We can pray in the Spirit, okay? And a lot of this is simply a switch of mind. I know for me, okay, so let me explain this. This is big. This is something the Lord is teaching me right now. Let me give it to you. I'm noticing that for much of my walk with the Lord, I was up here. Okay, if I'm praying, if I'm preaching, you know, if I'm doing different things, trying to hear from the Lord, I'm up here. I'm in this mind, this brain. But more and more, I'm feeling from down here, right? Down in the gut, down up, down up here, down, or up, down up here, down, down here. And I'm noticing as I shift my focus upon the spirit that it's actually coming from here. So I'm praying, I'm receiving words, I'm receiving unction down here. And we know the scripture, out of your belly will flow flow rivers of living water. And Jesus is speaking about the spirit. Some translations say heart, heart, belly, it's still down here. You know, 
out of your mind will flow rivers of out of your belly, out of your heart. So there is this connection. I heard Bob Jones speak about this as well, that out of your belly, out, out, the, the spirit dwells in the belly, that the spirit is down here in the belly. And more and more, I'm seeing that, that reality, that as I am praying, as I am speaking, as I am in this place with the Lord, I'm feeling it more from down here, down in the belly, down in the belly. You can you can do that right now. Down, you can just say it, down in the belly, come Holy Spirit. And the problem is with a lot of us, we're up here, okay? And we need to shift more down here and live from a place of the Spirit. And even if I'm down here, it totally relaxes so much. Like there's so much noise up here a lot of times, so much distraction, but down here, there's a lot more quiet. This, some of you may be like, what in the world is this dude talking about? This crazy guy. Hey, I'm just sharing with you what uh, the scriptures, the word of God and different things and practical application. So pray, let me again, let me read the word from the Lord. Praying in the spirit is more than praying in tongues. And so that's something to meditate on, something to think about. Um, because look, there's only so much time in a day. There's only, only so many actions. Every action I make, I want it to be effective. I want it to be efficient. I want to have the most bang for my buck, if you will, um, the most punch for the actions I choose to do. So if I'm going to spend time in prayer, if I do it by myself, it may be effective to a certain degree. But if I pray in the spirit, right, consciously focused on the spirit of God, I mean, Paul talks about it, right? Set your mind on things above. So we know that you can focus on something, right? So how about we focus on the Holy Spirit? If you live by the Spirit, then walk by the Spirit. That's an interesting verse. Why did Paul need to clarify, if you live by the Spirit, then walk, keep in step with the Spirit? It's because you can live in the Spirit, you can have the Spirit with you and not really walk with Him. And I think that's a big reason why many Christians are, uh, what's the word? They are fleshly. They're babes in Christ because they're born again. They've been saved, but yet they are still living with the carnal mind. They haven't received the revelation or they're ignorant or arrogant or just weak or whatever. I don't know the right answer to it. They're not relying on the spirit. They aren't focusing on the spirit. They're focused on themselves. They're focusing on the old way of doing things. But from a kingdom perspective, it's it's convoluted. It's 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 messy. But man, the Lord wants us to live by the Spirit and act by the Spirit and pray by the Spirit and speak by the Spirit, okay? Um, hallelujah. Let's pray real quick. I feel like there's two more words I want to share with you, two different words. I still have to stop and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just feel this question for those of you listening or watching. Um, do you want the Holy Spirit? Do you, I feel like the Holy Spirit speaking now. Do you want me in full measure without wanting? <laughs> That's interesting. Do you want me in full measure without wanting? Basically, do you want me without basically to the point where you are not in need of him in a sense because you have so much of his presence, his glory, his manifestation in your life? Do you? Do you? You can say yes. Now he hears you. Okay. Then I feel like to say this, come in Holy Spirit. So for those of you out there, if you want the Lord more, okay, right? Say, come in, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on. Come in. Yeah, come on. Come in, Jesus, by your Spirit. Come on. Whew, shout out. Come in, Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. All right. Let's go to the second word. I don't have a date or time for it. I kind of stopped that at this point. Um, but maybe I can start up again if it matters. Um, this is what I wrote down. And this looks like this is all his word. So I don't I didn't write any commentary or anything. It's not your works that I want, but your faith. It's not your efforts that I want, but your faith. Your loving devotion to me and to my words. Let me repeat it again. I felt the Lord say this. It's not your works that I want but your faith. It's not your efforts that I want, but your faith, your loving devotion to me and to my words. Come on, this is good. And so what I've gathered from this word was that 
what does the Lord want? What does he really want for our lives? Do you know? And yet we know the theology. We know the doctrine. We know it's not by works, by grace. We know we know how to quote the answers. But yet we still live from a place of working. And it's so hard because the thing is, you know, you got this liberal Christianity, you got this other stuff where it's like, you don't have to do anything. It's all by grace. Say a prayer, you're saved. Okay, you're going to heaven no matter what you do. That's crazy. That's so crazy. And it's horrible. It's so horrible Uh, because it's unbiblical and it's wicked and evil. It's demonic, right? If you don't have works, you don't have faith. But the thing is, we look to works more than we look to faith. And this is what the Lord is trying to say. We look at someone that is on the stage or somebody that's popular, able to do and we that's God doesn't care about person's ability. He can use a donkey. He can have the rocks cry out. He can use a child. All right. He he gave us gifts. Amen. He gave us talents. Amen. Come on. But that's not what pleases him. There are many talented individuals in the world, musicians, business individuals, leaders. Scientists, scientists, researchers, all these things. Is God, does God care? Is God going to give a bigger reward to an NFL player because he has a bigger stature? He can gain muscle faster, right? He has a quicker reaction time. Is he going to get a greater reward than somebody that was maybe a cripple? I don't think so. What is God looking for? What does it say in Hebrews? Without faith, it is impossible to please God without faith. And remember when they were calling, I love this verse. I believe it's John 6. I believe it's somewhere around John 6, maybe John 6. And they're saying to Jesus, what must we do to do the works of God? Man, they're just crying out. They're like, we're ready. We are excited. The kingdom is here. Like something's happening. Man, what's going on? And they're asking Jesus because they believe he's close to God. You know, they end up trying to stone him later. But at this point, they're they're asking him, say, what must we do to do the works of God? And what does the Lord say? Believe on the one whom he has sent. That's the work. Faith, belief, they're like the same thing. Faith and belief, whatever. It all comes down to the heart and what your heart is longing for and desiring and faith and belief, right? I mean, when Jesus, Jesus got so excited with faith, right? The centurion and the uh, Seraphonician woman, right? Both those people, they weren't Jews. And yet Jesus was so ecstatic by their faith. Man, I've not seen such faith in all of Israel, he said about the, the centurion. He was amazed by the man's faith. He was amazed by the Seraphonician woman, right? You don't really hear him say that about Peter walking on the water. He actually said, why did you doubt? You know, but that's another, that's another discussion. So, Here he's saying it's not works. Okay, it's not works. It's not your efforts. It's not what I want. I want, I want your faith. And then the the final part is your loving devotion to me and to my words. Right? Whew, your loving devotion to me, to my words. You know, man, there's people working hard, man. There's people working hard out there, Christians and non-Christians. And yeah, there's going to be reward, I believe, for those that have worked hard for God. Amen. But what is it coming from? What is the very thing those works are resting upon and, and going forth for? Right? You can work hard to be a billionaire because you're selfish, because you want to be the most powerful individual. So you're pumping out effort. You're pumping. Look, you could be a minister. You could be a Christian minister and you could be pumping out videos and pumping out sermons and pumping out books and all this stuff because you want to be a great minister. You want people to look up to you. You want to be in that the nice robe. You want the applause of the crowd, just like the Pharisees. And there's plenty of people out there. And I'm not trying to accuse the church and stuff. Look, I felt that too. You know, I'm doing these videos now. I get a, a dopamine rush. You know, when I see a video go over 100,000 views or 50,000, I'm like, woof, awesome. But it's it's really cool that I went through months of getting five views and 10 views. It humbles you. And you're like, Do, you're like what am I doing, Lord? And like, what's the point of this? No one's watching these videos. You know, and God says it's about obedience, right? And if I didn't have faith in God, I wouldn't be doing these videos. I'm not making money off these videos. You know what I'm saying? Like, Come on, the Lord is good. And I'm not saying I'm doing everything right, okay? 
But what I'm saying is this, the Lord wants your faith. He wants your devotion. He wants to know you believe in him. I mean, come on, we're saved by grace through faith. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. So belief, come on, Jesus. I just felt that I felt to ask you this question and you can answer it internally or you can answer it externally. Um, do you have faith in God? Do you believe in God? Do you? You know, uh, yeah, you can just say it. You know, I feel like the Lord wants, wants you to just say it. Not to me. I can't hear you. I'm back in time, you know. Do you have faith in me, says the Lord? Yeah, I just feel like for you to close your eyes. Hallelujah. It's like for you to close your eyes and just say, and give him your answer. Just be real. You know, some of you may have doubts and stuff, but yeah, I'll just be quiet for a little bit. And I'll ask the question again, do you have faith in me, my child? Yeah. Do you have faith in me, my daughter? Do you have faith in me, my son? Come on. All right. Last one. Last word. Okay. Third word. No date. Um, I'm assuming it's like a couple weeks ago. This is what I heard. There is always a better choice, and that choice is me, says the Lord. Let me repeat it again. There is always a better choice, and that choice is me, says the Lord. <laughs> Come on. Whew, we have so many choices, don't we? So many words. So many actions, so many decisions, and the Lord is saying, there's always a better choice. God, think about it. As soon as you wake up, your whole day is filled with choices. Should you get out of bed? Should you stay in bed? Should you go back to sleep? Should you get your phone? What in the world do you look at now that you picked up your smartphone? Where do you want to go in the world? <laughs> do you want to brush your teeth? Do you want to get what clothing do you want to wear? right? Who should you hang out with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's always these choices. And this word is, there's always a better choice. And that choice is me, says the Lord. Whew, come on. You know, it doesn't matter where you're going or what you're doing or where you're headed or whatever, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can always choose the Lord. Come on, when you get out of bed, you can choose to get out of bed for the Lord with the Lord, for the Lord. When you pick up your phone, you can look at your phone for the Lord. You can check your text messages with the Lord. You can make a call with the Lord and for the Lord. Excuse me, it can always be for, excuse me, for the Lord. When you go to school, when you go to job, when you make decisions, the Lord, the Lord. I'm making this decision for the Lord. I'm choosing the Lord in this decision. Temptation comes. You can choose to fall into it, right? It may feel good. You know it's going to feel good. Your mind knows it's going to feel good. Your dopamine is ready. It's like, yo, if you pick that, we're going to release dopamine. You're going to feel a rush of good feeling, right? Serotonin, all that stuff. Or you can choose the Lord, which may create suffering, which may create inconvenience for you in the short term, which may rob you of that good feeling. You can, you can choose flesh. You do a business transaction that you know you're ripping the person off. Or you can choose the Lord, right? You see $10 on, you can go on and on. You know what I'm saying? The Lord says, there's always a better choice. Always. And that choice is me, says the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. We praise you. Come on. Can we praise him? Can we praise the Lord? Jesus, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Mighty God, hallelujah. Come on, just hallelujah. Whoo, Jesus, we love you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. We're excited. We're excited for you. We're excited for your coming. Jesus, 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 I bless you. I bless you in the name of the Lord. I bless you in the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, I pray you're blessed by this. Uh, I'm excited to make more of these, sharing these words with you, to edify you, to encourage you, because, hey, what else should we do with our lives but to edify the church of Jesus and to bring the gospel to the lost and to honor God with the way we live in this life? 
All right, we're done. Bless you. Bye.